chemistry sets. Although the odd girl did creep in. Look, there's me. Yeah, I'd, I'd had the chemistry set as a, a it, was, it came as a Christmas present. And it was, it was, it was only literally an hour before I'd uh, blown it up. 17-year-old Ian Findlay was experimenting with his chemistry set in the living room of his home. There was an explosion. Neighbours heard the bang and ran out to find that the living room window had been blown out. Ian managed to make his way to number 72, where Mrs K.C. Bell treated an injured arm, put him to bed and summoned an ambulance. Chemistry sets throughout the years have reflected many changes in science and society, and never more so than after the Second World War. Young, would-be chemists, inspired by the apocalyptic images in the comics of the day and their soldier fathers, could not resist experimenting with terrifying consequences. Two 14-year-old pupils were seriously injured on Saturday when an explosion occurred while they were trying to make liquid oxygen. Well, this is the chemistry set. Oh, my goodness. I took my vintage chemistry set to Joy Ledger at the Bristol Science Centre to find out just how dangerous this box really was. So... What's most alarming about it, I suppose? Copper sulphur would definitely have a hazard warning today. The test tubes are so flimsy. They really are. We wouldn't use anything like this in a lab at school these days. These, heated with a Bunsen burner, wouldn't last very long. They'd melt very quickly. Bunsen burner? Yes. Gosh, it's tiny. And this would go... where? Well, Into the... Presumably. Gas supply. The gas supply. Which is unbelievable that they could actually have, and there must be some sort of tap to turn the gas on and off. So you've got the full force of the gas coming in that would feed the whole cooker, just going through that little flame. Oh my goodness. We decide to read the instruction booklet. Always a good idea. Only... There's absolutely no diagrams at all. And actually, I think it says up here um, that you will see there are no diagrams. So then you can be more liberal with your experiment. You can change the apparatus as you, as you feel. I, I'm just staggered at the... Um, the lack of instructions, um, the idea of quantities, concentrations, there's no indication of how much um, solution to add to each one, no a mention of how to dispose of the chemicals at the end. It's, it's just frightening and there's absolutely no mention of parental supervision. Still, at least they are clear about what to do if your chemistry kit loving chum has a problem. It actually says here that if the clothing of the person is on fire, pull the person down to the floor or strike them sharply behind the knees so they fall. <laughs> Cover them with any materials you might have to hand, with rugs, cloths, or carpet, etc. And then it says, you will have used your scientific knowledge in the noblest way. You will have applied science to the service of man, with capital letters, and probably saved life. And it says underneath, science is never evil except in wrongly used by man. Many of the chemicals in chemistry sets were caustic, so they would burn the skin and irritate it, which, of course, would be particularly dangerous if it got into the eyes. Part of the point of the chemistry sets was that they exploded. They wanted to make these explosions and the bright colours to impress friends and make it look like a magic trick. The explosions could burn, set the hair on fire, set the clothes on fire, damage the eyes, even blind a child. And, of course, Children wanted to share these with their friends and they'd think nothing of putting some of the chemicals in their pockets when they went out. And of course that could burn holes in the material and, and then in the skin or even catch fire spontaneously. With some chemicals, 14-year-old Ian Marori meant to stage some experiments with his home chemistry set. But he put them in his pocket while he went to the pictures with his mother. He was sitting watching the show when his clothes began to smolder. A man sitting nearby wrapped his coat round the boy to smother the burning clothing. The accident was due to body heat igniting the chemicals in his pocket. Today, health and safety regulations are more stringent than they were in 1950s cinemas. So we are wearing goggles to do an experiment to illustrate how lethal this kit could be. 
Right now, in here we have the permanganate, which is the chemical we saw in the, the purple chem chemical that was in the kit. Neris Shah, our lab technician, is going to add glycerol, a clear, odourless liquid that might have been found in the home medicine cabinet as it was used to treat constipation and sore throats. So okay. what we're going to do is just make a little pile of the potassium permanganate in the middle. And then I'm just going to pour on a couple of drops of the glycerol on top. So it sort of looks like nothing's happening. Ah, there we go. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. It's not necessarily child's play. So it makes quite a lot of smoke and some beautiful purple flames. And quite a smell. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, a little bit of a smell. Oh, my word. And, and, what's just... the, and that hesitation, that moment of it looking like nothing's going to happen is the most yeah. dangerous thing of all, isn't it? Well, if I was a child, I'd have moved on to something else by then. Neris only used a small amount of potassium permanganate and a drop of glycerol. Imagine if we'd been more liberal in the amounts we used. A warning was sounded at an Epsom inquest today that there are grave dangers in letting children play with chemicals which are in themselves harmless, but in combination may be fatal. John Jesty, aged 15, died in hospital from injuries received in an explosion which also injured a boy companion. Unsurprisingly, the American chemistry kits were even more spectacular. There was even an American chemistry set that included uranium dust and a mini Geiger counter so that children could do experiments and measure the radiation. The company didn't stop making it because of the dangers of the dust. It just didn't sell very well. Uranium actually wasn't very exciting. It didn't explode and have puffs of smoke, and nobody wanted to buy it. Eventually, new laws came in which required the kits to be non-explosive and non-toxic. But it's worth remembering what the chemistry set manufacturers used to say. Experimenter today, scientist tomorrow. But I think the really interesting thing about chemistry sets, if you interview eminent scientists nowadays, many of them will actually say that it was having a chemistry set as a child that sparked their interest in the science. <laughs>